Christ. Let's hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to your spirit. Our reading is from the Holy Gospel according to the Evangelist St. Luke. Glory to the Lord. said, as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise? For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. ask the children to stay a little bit longer today because we're going to install the parish council and um, we'll do that um, a little bit later in the service after communion. The Christian life is not just striving against sin, although sometimes it feels like that becomes our focus. But we haven't yet, as the book of Hebrews reminded us in our Bible study this week, been striving under the shedding of our blood, sadly. But we should be striving against sin, but that is not the only thing we should be doing. It's not just about putting off the old man that's corrupt. It's also crucially important that we put on the new man who was created in the image and the likeness of God himself. This is important because ultimately our closeness to God is based upon our confirmation to his image and to his likeness both here and in the age to come. Relationship, relationship to God is based on how much we resemble Him. He loves all mankind, truly, but only as children do we really get to know Him. It's only as His dear children that we really get the closeness to God that can really deliver us into the heavenly places while we're still in the flesh. And so today, we want to talk about relationships to God. God created us all to live in close fellowship with him. I think the picture of John at Jesus' breast is so often a good one to call to mind. When we think about being at peace with God, loving Jesus Christ, being loved by him, and being totally unfettered by sin and by distance between us, that we can just lay our heads, as it were, on his breast. This is what God calls us to. God is love, and he wants us to dwell in love, to be like him, and to increase in our love and our capacity to love. The Father calls us today in this gospel to rise above the natural responses and to become living icons of the divine qualities. As we live like God among men, we become divinized. This is what the Orthodox Church calls theosis, becoming like God. We become godlike. And when we do, we become partakers of the divine nature, and we become truly, not just in name only, sons and daughters of God, his children. Let's look at some of these vital characteristics that we must attain to if we want to truly become his children, as taught by the Lord in our gospel today. 
He starts off by giving us the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? We all know this rule. And he says it to us to remind us that it's not something that we do naturally. In fact, the key verse of this passage is the one, the second one from the end, where he says, you're supposed to love your enemies. That's not what we do naturally. We're supposed to just do good, and we're naturally sinners, right? And we're supposed to lend, not receiving again. And so he says to us to start off this golden rule. He says, do what men don't do unto you, but what you would have that they should do unto you. And then you do likewise to them. No one ever really wants for oneself anything but good. We always desire that everything would be good for us. That everybody that we meet would do well to us, right? How many of us want evil to be done to us? This is how God wants us to treat others. This is our calling, to do good, no matter what the circumstances might be. I would say this is truly impossible without God's help. Naturally, we're not going to do good to people that don't do good to us. And so God's calling us at the beginning of our gospel to rise above the earthly life. To rise above the life that's exemplified by everyone else around you. And to become like his children. And so he gives us three aspects of this high calling to be children of God. Three aspects which are very easy to understand. None of us should go out of here today not understanding what the three aspects are that God calls us to. They're very easy to understand so that we can apply them. First, he says, we're supposed to love people, every person. Love our enemies. He says, if you love those which love you, what thank of you? He's telling you that if you do what's just natural, there's no reward there. There's no reward just for loving people that love us. The reward is when we rise above that and we're able somehow to find a way to love our enemies. Who are your enemies? Maybe you can make a long list of them. I hope not. Depends on our stage of life, right? Sometimes we feel like we have a lot of enemies, even as Christians. Even if we are walking as dear children. Enemies are those that disagree with us, right? Enemies are those that harm us. They may be people that we know directly or, or cultures that we feel threaten us. We feel like we've got enemies or we're compassed about by enemies. I would say oftentimes we feel like we have more enemies than we feel like we have friends. And if we only love those which love us, God says, what thank of you? Your heart is small. But Jesus wants our hearts to be enlarged. And to be able to love our enemies is the call that he gives us to love those enemies, no matter how numerous they might be, no matter how threatening they might be, no matter what predicament they put you in, even unto death, we're supposed to love our enemies. This is where the reward is in this first aspect of the divine love. It transcends just loving those which love us. It goes to loving our enemies. Secondly, he says to us, we're supposed to do good. And it's very simple, he says. He says, love your enemies. And he says, then do good for the second aspect. And he says, if you do good just to those which do good to you, what thank of you again? What reward is there? There's none. The reward comes when we do what's above nature. When someone does good to you, it's easy to do good back to them. It's just natural. And it's good to do that. It's fine. It's okay. But the reward, the divine calling, if we're going to be truly children of God, and truly have a relationship with Him. He's calling us to do good, period. There is no condition to do good. There's no expectation of something back to do good. There's no necessity of requital to do good. He just says, do good. To do good. Every time, every place, everywhere. And then we'll be the children of the Most High. The third aspect is about giving. He uses the word to lend because that's how the world looks at things. The world wants a return on everything that we give. We look at 
what we pass out of our hands is an investment to come back to us, multiply, or at least maintain. What God calls us to, I would say, is the word giving. Because when you lend expecting nothing back, you just gave it away. God wants us to be able to have that kind of spirit. No reward. Is going to attach itself if we just give and we expect to get something back. And notice how he talks about the expectation to get back. When you lend, you give out with an expectation that you're going to get back with your usury, your interest, your part of the business, whatever. And so there's an expectation as you release something from your hand that more will come back. What he says is that we lend, he says, hoping for nothing back. Not just expecting nothing back, but desiring nothing back. Because we're looking towards the heavenly reward. This giving is hoping and desiring nothing. Not just taking nothing. Jesus goes deeper. He says hoping and desiring nothing. It's almost as if we're hoping to be despoiled for his sake. To be diminished in our earthly house for his sake. To die to self. And to give hoping for nothing back. Nothing but the divine reward is desired. These are the three aspects that God calls us to. To love everyone. Including and especially your enemies. If you want a divine reward, then that's what we do. To do good, not just to those that do good, but to just do good all the time, every place. And to give and to lend, hoping for nothing back. He says, love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And then he says these great words. And he says, if you do this, your reward is going to be great. There's no reward for loving just the people that love us, for doing good to those just that do good to us, and to lend to those that are going to give back to us. The reward is when we do these things God's way. We love enemies. We love enemies all the time. We do good. We do good all the time. And we give, as is required by the Lord, hoping for nothing back. Then he says this. This is the promise, not just the reward. This is the better part of the reward. And it's part of the reward, I believe. It's what we can enjoy. This is what God's calling us to. This is the relationship that comes out of what we do. How we live affects what we are. And what we are affects how close to God we can go. Remember, on our icon, in the tropar of the Feast of the Transfiguration, the Lord showed His glory to His disciples, it says, as much as they could bear it. When we become like him, then here's our promise. He says, your reward will be great. He says, and, 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 ye shall be, promise, children of the highest. Truly, there's children that are children in name only, that don't have close to their parents. Perhaps you know some like that. Perhaps you have some like that. Perhaps you have some on the scale that lover and closer a little bit more. Perhaps you have some that are very dear, very close. You love all your children, but some of them have a relationship with you that's different, that's closer, that's almost magnetic. This is what God wants. When he says, you'll have your reward, and part of that reward, the best part of that reward, is that you'll be really, truly, not just a name, my children. By becoming like God, and letting his image and his likeness grow, the image being unburnished and shining brightly, and the likeness being unconfused by sin and by divergent ideas of things, when we get the divine focus, then truly we become children of God in reality. But children like John that lean against his breast. What comfort there is there. What joy. What hope. What clarity. What divine grace. This is what God calls us to. 
God says to us all, do these things and you'll truly become like me. And you'll truly become closer to me. And you'll truly become my dear child. This is his calling. The last verse explains something about how God thinks about things and how he's kind of revealed in these three aspects the way he wants us to think. It says this, almost as a non sequitur until you really think about it and meditate about it. He says, therefore, he says, be therefore merciful as your father is also merciful. <coughs> he says, you're presuming that you want God as your father and you want to be his child. Your father is now, always has been, always will be merciful. This is the steadfast nature of the Lord. He's always merciful. It says he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. He is truly kind to the unthankful and the evil. Let this sink in. He's just called you to love, to do good, and to give to everyone. This is what God does. He does this every day, in every life. No matter what you might think about what's going on in this world around you, no matter what you might see, no matter how you might think the politics of the world is going, or the economy, or your pocketbook, or anything else, know this, that God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil, and how much more so to those that are good. All the time, every day, in every way, God loves mankind. He loves sinners. He came into the world to die for sinners, not for holy people. And no matter what we see, God is always, always, always doing right, doing good, giving where it's not deserved, loving where it's not deserved, on the cross where it wasn't deserved. This is what God is doing right now, and he always shall be, and he always has been, doing what he asks us to do in these three aspects. Loving the unlovely, loving his enemies, those that despitefully used him, and spit upon him on the cross. He wanted their salvation. Those that don't do good, that sin, God loves. Those that are taking money or patiently from others, he loves. And he's doing good. You see, the measuring stick that God gives us is not looking around to see what everybody else is doing. The measuring stick is his divine nature. And it says in the scripture, right here, that God is merciful. That's what he's calling us to. Always merciful. Not doing what nature inspires. That's what he calls us to. But doing what's divine and supernatural. You see, mercy, and God is merciful, is not giving people what they deserve. That's what mercy is. It's true love. It's withholding of judgment and doing good. It's unchanging in all circumstances. It doesn't alter with circumstances. His mercy is always there, no matter what we might see, no matter where we are in our life. God still loves us. He still is doing good, and he's still giving. This is what God calls us to. This child of God is your calling. You want to be God's child? You want to be comfortable at his breast, leaning there with him? You want to be in sweet fellowship? Then you need to do these things. Otherwise, you can live how you want. God will let you. God will still pour a certain amount of grace on you, but it'll be like water off a duck's back. It won't sink in until you become more like him. With fulfillment of these things, you can enjoy unlimited closeness to God in a relationship of the dear child to the parent, not the way of the child. Your relationship with him won't be sundered by your sin. There'll be nothing fettering his boundless love towards you when you do truly what he asks you to do, to be merciful like he is. This is how God calls us to himself. May the Lord God bless us and draw us close as we love all, do good unto all, and give, hoping for nothing bad, being merciful like he is. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.